What would you do if you got a call from someone you sold a piece of equipment to and they said this to you? Hey, you sold me a bad machine and I want my money back. Now, being a reasonable person, you might tell them that you'd like to at least get it back and see if it's fixable, but when you get it back, you find out it's a lot worse than they said it was. In today's video, we look at this Poland chainsaw and the problem was that it had been in storage for a very long time and it wouldn't start. As you can see, I've already fixed it in a previous video. If you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. However, before I fixed it, I had to give it a quick cleaning. That way I wouldn't get dirt in places like the carb, fuel tank, or even inside the engine. While I clean this chainsaw, I'm going to finish the story I was telling you about at the beginning of this video, and if I have time, I'll tell you a few other not-so-great experiences I had to go through. As much as I would like to tell you about how great this kind of hobby is for your body and mind, not all the experiences end up that way. I think this happened over seven years ago, and I'd only been doing this kind of hobby for a few years. I was mostly fixing mowers, blowers, and trimmers, but I'd also worked on several chainsaws by this time as well. I don't recall how I came across it, but I was able to find a free Poland Wild Thing chainsaw, which needed a full service. I didn't fix it immediately, but instead kept it until I had time to get to it. This is where our story begins. Now, I'm very open about my hobby with anyone I talk to. That's how I'm able to get as much work as I do, and most are happy to send work my way. One day, one of my co-workers at the massive company I work at told me that their neighbor, who I've already sold a mower to about a month earlier, also needed a chainsaw. I told them that I had one, but I hadn't gone through it just yet. The next day, my coworker told me their neighbor wanted the saw, but they wanted it by the weekend, which was a long holiday weekend. That way, they could cut up a giant tree they had in their yard for a very long time. So I told my coworker to let them know I would have it done and get it to them in a few days. That afternoon, I started working on the saw, and everything worked out very well, but I wouldn't give it to them until I made sure it was working like it should. The next day after work, I started the saw cold, and it started the way it was supposed to. The test cuts also went very well. Now, the chain wasn't super sharp, but it was sharp enough to work until either it was sharpened or they bought a new chain. Overall, I was happy with the repair and was ready to give it to them the next day. The next morning, I loaded the saw into my car, went to work, and after work, stopped off at my friend's house, and then we walked across the street to meet his neighbor. Now, I'm not going to say anything about them personally because that wouldn't be fair, but I guess they may not have been as knowledgeable about equipment as I had hoped. This is when things get a little fishy. The long weekend came and went, and I didn't hear anything from them, which is a good thing. I was guessing everything went well with the neighbor, and I even asked my co-worker if they talked to them. They said that they hadn't communicated with them since we both saw them, so I was pretty happy with the sale. That was until about three months later. I think I sold them the saw at the beginning of summer when it wasn't very hot yet, but as fall was rolling around, my co-worker let me know his neighbor wanted to get a refund on the saw that I sold him. I was very surprised to say the least, it had been months since I last sold it to them and they must have had an issue with it and changed their mind. I told my coworker that I wanted to take a look at it first, then I would decide if I was going to give him back his money. The next day my coworker brought the saw to work and then that's when I took it home and started looking at it. I don't recall but if you look at my library of videos I think you'll find this particular saw but I might be wrong and if I didn't make a video about it I should have because what I found was quite horrific. If I recall, the saw started and ran, which was great news. That at least meant they didn't run it on straight gasoline, which would have ruined the engine, but the bar and chain were destroyed. I wasn't sure what had happened, but after taking a closer look, it looks as though the oiler wasn't delivering as much oil as it should have been. If that happens, the chain will heat up and start to smoke. Not only that, the bar will also heat up as well, and as everything heats up, all the clearances will start to change. This will make it very difficult to cut any piece of wood. This is when the real issue comes up. The buyer realized it was having an issue and decides to fix it by adjusting the tension on the chain to compensate for it, and then continues to use it instead of letting me know. 
if you hadn't guessed it, this wasn't the best idea to try out. Now, I don't know what happened after this. All of this is pretty much a guess from what I found while inspecting the bar, chain, and drive gear, which was also damaged. If you hadn't figured it out, the issue I had with what happened was the user continuing to use it even though it was very obvious that there was an issue. It's like when you're driving your car down the highway and not caring when you see smoke coming from the hood and you can tell there's something wrong with the way the car is driving, but you continue to drive it anyway as though nothing was wrong. In my book, that's called negligence. Now, I don't know why it took them three months to ask for a refund, but now the ball was in my court. I had to now decide if I should give them their money back or say sorry. It's been too long, and it's very obvious you damaged the saw by continuing to use it instead of notifying me. I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with me, but in the end, I took the saw back and gave them their money. Now, why would I do that? The biggest reason was reputation. Even though the circumstances weren't in my favor, I hadn't declined a refund at that point, so to keep my reputation, I took it back. The other reason was that it would make great content for a video. Now, I know some people will have a different opinion about the situation, and I would hope so because that's your right. Fortunately, because of these circumstances, I also have the right to decline any future services to them as well, which did happen about a year later. The neighbor was able to get my phone number from my coworker and asked for either service or to buy another piece of equipment, and if you hadn't guessed it, I graciously declined. So is that wrong of me? I don't think so. I made a choice to give them back their money, and I also had a choice to help them, and I chose not to. So what if I got a message from them today asking for my services, what would I do? That's pretty easy. I would take their call. Now, if it was a service call, I would tell them I would need to diagnose it first and then give them a real-world quote for the service. If they wanted to buy a piece of equipment, I would also quote them a competitive price based on the market value in my area. And if they decided to accept either option, I would tell them that all sales are final and there is no warranty for servicing any used equipment. So how is that any different from any other person calling for help? Most of the time, I'm very lenient when it comes to prices I ask for. Most often, I ask under market value for the items I sell. And as for service, I would gladly take back any piece of equipment for warranty work to keep my reputation intact. However, in this situation, leniency was already used up in the last transaction. Now, some would say I'm being vindictive, which I'm not. The definition of being vindictive is a desire for revenge. And what I mentioned earlier, I don't think that would be a good example of revenge. I'm just not giving them a break on price or service, which then again is my choice. Thankfully, this situation hasn't come up just yet, but at least I'm prepared if it ever does. The lesson I learned from the situation was how to deal with customers that are less than reasonable and that I have every right to choose who I do business with. I guess I'll have to save my other stories where things don't go quite to plan and the other lessons I learned while doing this hobby. So my question is, have you ever had to deal with less than desirable situations with either customers, friends, or even family members when it comes to small engine repairs? It's unfortunate, but situations like this should never get to you on a personal basis, but it's completely understandable if it does. Just learn from it and grow to be better after it passes. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.